Watch the front wheels of this Corvair take the crushing impact of almost the full weight of the car. Stability, too, is put to the ultimate test. On punishing ruts and chuck holes, Chevrolet and Corvair coil springs stand up as much as three times as long as conventional leaf springs. Here, Corvette demonstrates its spectacular handling ability on one of Europe's toughest test courses. Day and night, without a single break except for fuel, going at almost top speed, yet those Corvettes never falter. Through the almost trackless Central American jungle, through mud, swamp, swollen rivers, and tropic heat, Corvair proves it can stand the gas. The 2,000-mile mobile gas economy run is just one more example of Chevrolet's willingness to test its products in every way possible. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a Merry Christmas, and today I'm back at my parents' house, and it's the day after Christmas here, but I wanted to show you my last car that I haven't put up on YouTube yet, and that's my old 63 Corvair here. And um, I'm going to move my Lincoln out of the way so I can show it to you a little easier and take the cover off, and I'll be back in a minute. All right, here we are. This is my 1963 Chevrolet Monza Spider, and uh, I've actually owned this car for a long time. It was the second car that I ever owned, and it was the first car I bought with my own money. And I actually bought this back in 1996, so I've had it a, quite a while. And uh, it is one of the most troublesome cars I've owned. <laughs> it's just an oddball car. And, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, this is the only uh, air-cooled rear-engine car that Chevy's ever made. And it was made to uh, basically compete with the Volkswagen Beetle at the time. So it kind of uh, copies a lot of the same things as the Germans were doing. You know, the engine's in the back, and you got uh, rear-wheel drive. And you got an air-cooled flat six engine. I guess I'll just show you that right now. And this is not an original Spider, actually. This this car started off at a as a Monza at some point. So you can see here, it just says Monza on the badges. But the Monza Spider is the turbocharged model. And at some point before I owned the car. Someone converted it into a turbocharger. So um, I got this car kind of as an ongoing project anyway. And uh, I remember I paid 2000 for it back, back in 1996. And I drove it quite a while. But it's, it's had a lot of issues. And at this point, I finally got things pretty well sorted out. But these cars are just so strange that it took me forever just to get... Um, you know everything figured out and not too many people know what these are and or how to work on them so a lot of it i just had to figure out myself so here's the engine uh you can see it's flat it's a flat engine a boxer engine and it's actually kind of under here but you can see the this is where it sucks in the air to cool it and you got your alternator here you got your oil pressure fuel pump this is the distributor which goes up to six cylinders here and here is the turbo under here so you got a little heat shield here and that's the actual um, turbo under there the, the heat shield actually just kind of uh, keeps the rest of the engine bay 
um, from getting too hot because there's a big exhaust pipe under it. And at the time, I don't do this anymore, but what they do is they put the spare tire here. And you can see there's like a little dent here on this, uh, on this thing to kind of rest the spare tire against it. <laughs> so people did things a little differently back then. I, I don't want my tire back here. I've got it up in the front. But you can see Spider turbocharged, 150 horsepower. And this is the main problem with this car, is the side draft carburetor. Uh, it has given me nothing but headaches. And um, I've got it sorted out now, but for, at the <laughs> there's been many a time where that thing just flooded out and left me stranded. It's, it's just been a pain. And I finally figured out to uh, change the 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 float on the carburetor to, to get it running right. I had to actually change what the factory specs recommend uh, just to get it right. <laughs> but now it's working. So, I have a little Corvair. I'll show you the inside too. This car used to be brown actually when I got it. And I got it repainted uh, probably about 10 years ago or so. And I replaced the seats here with these kind of generic bucket seats here. And I, oh, looks like some someone's been in here with muddy, muddy feet. But I replaced all these inserts here after I got it painted and replaced the carpet. So the interior is mostly new. This is the same dash I got, uh, I got the car with. And luckily it hasn't cracked yet. I've been trying to take good care of it. And I took the back seats out. It used to have back seats when I got it, but I took them out uh, just so I can. Well, I forget why actually. They don't they don't match these gray the gray parts of the car, so I need to have it reupholstered. I've got the back seat somewhere, I think upstairs in my parents' house here. And another problem with the car was it get really hot inside from the engine back there, so I put all this heat shielding in the back. That's what that silver stuff is there. You can kind of see that. But this car was kind of advanced for its time. A lot of people don't know, but the Corvair was the, um, it was the first factory manufactured car with the turbocharger on it. And you can see we got a little boost gauge there even. And I got four on the floor there. You can see the, f the floor here is very flat because there's no, um, you know, uh, drivetrain running through the front of the car like on most cars. My friend got me a spider glove box emblem there. <laughs> so that's, that's what the original uh, badges would look like on the outside. But I've never, I've never taken the time to get get them. But yeah, let's let's try starting it up. See if it'll start. My dad said that he thinks he started it a few months ago, but I haven't seen this car for about a year, so we'll see what happens here. I did take the time to make sure the battery was charged before, <laughs> so it wouldn't end up like my uh, Lincoln video. Let's see, we're in neutral here. Let's see. Let's see this guy will start. Little gas. Yeah, it's been a long time since this car's been started. I might have to get some starting fluid out, we'll see. I'll give it one more one more try. Baby. No, I don't. I think we're going to need a little starting fluid. All right, well, let me go grab that and I'll meet you back uh, in a second. Okay, I've grabbed the starting fluid. And as you can see, I took the air filter off the carburetor here so we can just spray a little starting fluid in there. Oh, I don't think it's 
flaps open here. Let's see if I can open that. Well, let's see if that works. Sometimes the car wants to start, it just needs a little extra kick. I think, uh, <laughs> I don't think I got any starting fluid in the carb, actually. Uh, okay, I'm going to put the phone down for a second. Okay, I just put, got some inside the carburetor, so let's give it a test. Let's start from the outside here. There we go. Nope. <laughs> and there we don't go. <laughs> Come on, baby. This is easier with two people, usually. You get a little... Someone spraying in the carb while the other person tries to start it. All right, let me try this one more time. Okay. Come on. Let's go. Ay, ay, ay. All right, finally. Got it started. And it's running really rich, I can tell. It hasn't run for a long time, so I'm sure it's all gunged up with gas. Sound too bad though. Yeah, with my Lincolns, I can go away for a long time and then you know come back and they just start right up. But this car, really, if it doesn't get driven regularly, the you know the fuel lines and the carburetor just kind of gum up, and it takes a lot to get things going again. And, Really the best thing to do would be have this car in Arizona with me and be able to drive it at least once a week, but fortunately just not in that situation right now. Anyways, got this thing running and I'm going to just let it warm up for a little bit and then I'm going to put the air filter back on and go put some air in the tires as they're kind of, they're looking a little low. What else can I tell you about this car? See, these uh, wheels aren't original. Those were those are on the car when I bought it, and people always ask me, "Oh, those are the Dukes of Hazard wheels." <laughs> so well, I didn't mean that. That's just what they came with. And you can see my bumper is kind of rusty. I gotta get that rechromed someday. And I have to redo the wiring on this car. So I, I bought a wiring harness to replace the old one with because it's kind of, you know, wearing out after so many years. Uh, but I haven't put it in yet. So that's my next kind of like big project with this car. Things have been kind of put on hold on this car for a while. I just don't have the time to do anything with it really until I get it to Arizona. Well, that's it for now. I'll get it started again and go put some air in the tires. All right, we got the uh, car back on the 
road finally and uh, this is a couple days later I changed the oil and I found that a rat had been chewing up one of my vacuum hoses and I think that's why I couldn't start it before but as you can see the car is running and uh, we got out on the road with it thrust of turbocharged scat. This is the sizzling Corvair Monza Spider with a whopping big 150 horsepower turbo air engine. Beneath this bright, fresh, scrubbed look, a hurricane of power waits to be unleashed by an exhaust-driven turbo supercharger. There's also a four-speed transmission for extra lift on the takeoff. And for dazzling middle and high-speed acceleration. There's a tachometer and special pressure and temperature gauges to tell you what's going on behind you. up front, you can see for yourself. And when the going gets rough, you can count on turbocharged power and a heavy-duty suspension to see you through. But the real fun of the exciting new Corvair Monza Spider is the fun of looking ahead. and the thrill of action roll right along with a sports-minded customer in the new Corvair Monza Spider. 